Hi, my name is George Garcia. I am a community manager for Fusion 360 Electronics and Eagle. We welcome you to this video series titled Signal Integrity Concepts in Fusion 360. In this series of videos, we want to go over how you can use a signal integrity extension in the latest release of Fusion 360 to analyze your circuit boards for signal integrity problems before you go to hardware and start manufacturing and then find out after you've invested all that money that there's issues with the board. So in this first video, I want to just go over some basic concepts. Now, I'm not going to stand here and say that this is going to be in any way, shape, or form comprehensive. Signal integrity is a vast subject and one that you can study for many years. But the idea of this video is to at least give you enough intuition to know why signal integrity is important in your designs and how you can figure out to use the feedback that you get from the signal integrity extension. So let's get started. In this video, I'm going to talk about some key points. First, we want to talk about the importance of constant impedance. Then we're going to talk about how current follows the path of least impedance, what parameters we have in the PCB that we can use to control and achieve a specific impedance in our boards, what's next in this series, and then some additional resources if you want to find out more. So let's start off with the first section. A constant cross-section equals a constant impedance. When we're talking about signal integrity, if you know the characteristic impedance and you know the time delay of the trace, you know almost everything you need to know electrically about that connection. When dealing with high speed signals, it is vital that the signal sees a constant impedance. Otherwise, your signal will become corrupted as it travels down the trace, and if the corruption is sufficiently severe, you're not even going to be able to receive the signal properly, which will create issues in your circuit. The most important factor in keeping a constant impedance is keeping a cross-section geometry around the trace. So if you notice here, I've taken a cross-section of a PCB inside of Fusion 360, and you're going to notice I've highlighted the trace, the copper plane, or dielectric. Now, if we think of just one trace on its own, typically this is the structure that we're dealing with. We're dealing with microstrips. We have a trace. It has a certain separation from the plane on, on a bottom layer or an internal layer. And that architecture is going to result in a certain impedance. That cross-sectional geometry is going to result in a certain impedance. Now, if we look here, we have this trace has another trace nearby. It has a certain separation from, from nearby polygons. Any variation in this, if the trace moves away, if the polygons separate more from the trace, if the copper plane on the bottom disappears, if the copper plane to the sides disappears, etc., any variation in the cross-sectional geometry will result in a change in impedance, which could lead to problems when transmitting high-speed signals. Now let's go to the next point. Current follows a path of least impedance, and this is related to our first point. Now when we're talking about signal integrity, even though we're very accustomed to talking about ground, this term is going to create problems when we're talking about signal integrity. So what we want to do is really think about a signal path and a return path. As we know, electricity flows in loops, so any signal that leaves a source must return to it somehow. So we want to make sure to think about that. There's a signal path and there's a return path, and they both need to be taken care of. The path of least impedance occurs when the return path can flow closely to the signal path. The closer they can follow each other, the lower the impedance the signal will see. So if there's any break, any change in that geometry, any change in that path, then we're going to see an impedance change. And if we look at these images here, we're going to be able to see it. So on the top left, we have the top layer. We have a trace, and we have the current flowing. The other images are the return path. So let's say it's another polygon on the bottom layers. If you notice, if there's any type of break, any type of cutout, that's going to cause the return current to have to deviate from the forward current path. It's going to have to go around this cutout. And in doing so, the impedance is going to change. And when you do simulations using the signal integrity extension, you're going to see that that happens. So it's very important to take care of both the signal path and the return path. We want them to be as identical as possible. 
That way, the signal sees the least impedance possible. If everything stays the same in the cross-sectional geometry, then if we can do that, we're going to maintain a constant impedance as well. Now, what are some parameters that we can adjust to control the impedance of a specific trace? Because while it's important to have a consistent impedance all the way along the trace, we often need to have a specific impedance value. So if we look here at, at this slide, we're going to see that we have three basic knobs that we can adjust, three different parameters that we can adjust to achieve a specific impedance. We have the trace width, we have dielectric thickness, and then we have the specific material that the dielectric is made out of. Now, in most PCBs, we're talking about FR4. However, depending on the application, we may need a different dielectric material. Now, these knobs, these different parameters, I've listed them in order of increasing difficulty. So changing the trace width is the easiest thing to do. Changing the dielectric material is the hardest thing to do. And the workflow we want to follow when working on, on signal integrity problems and trying to control impedance is we can use PCB calculators such as the PCB toolkit from Saturn PCB to give us a ballpark estimate of what we need to achieve a specific impedance. And then we can use the signal integrity extension in Fusion 360 to validate our results and give us further insight. Because the PCB calculator is assuming that there's no variation in the, in the cross-sectional geometry. However, when you route a trace, and maybe you don't see you know, the variation, the signal integrity extension will highlight any change in impedance, and then you can investigate why the impedance changed. And often, it'll be related to the previous two points we spoke about. A change in cross-sectional geometry, or something has happened on the return path, and now it can't follow the signal path closely. And again, like I mentioned, they're both related. So what's next? Well, in the rest of the series of videos, we're actually going to go through a practical example. We're going to show you how the signal integrity extension works, what is the information it's giving you, and then how you can use it to correct your signal integrity problems. So with that said, I want to leave you with some additional resources. These are some links to the Saturn PCB toolkit. They will appear in the description as well, as well as a couple of really good books on the subject that I encourage if you're interested in signal integrity and you want to learn more about it, either of these two books are going to really get you on your way. So thank you very much for watching this video. See you in the next one.